Bonjour, welcome to Miss Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking. I'm your host, Miss Lucy. Me and my fishing buddies are going out in God's Pond, the Gulf of Mexico, and we're going with Skipper Andre Boudreaux from Boudreaux's Marina in Dulac, Louisiana. We're gonna catch some big fish, chef. Then we're gonna cook them. Of course, we're gonna have a great time. So you stay with us, Shaq. We'll be right back. The Louisiana Seafood Board is proud to sponsor Miss Lucy's Cooking Series. Louisiana cooking is known around the world. And Louisiana's main ingredient, seafood. We put the same thing into our music that we put into our gumbo. Everything. A Louisiana tour guide is available at www.louisianatravel.com. Louisiana crawfish, an appetizing natural resource. Years ago, I began collecting recipes. Some were my own, others were my mama's and grandma's. Stored away and almost forgotten. Imagine my delight recently at finding this treasure from my past. How precious. Now, I share these recipes and memories with my children and granddaughter. Just another part of my heritage and Miss Lucy's classic Cajun culture and cooking. <laughs> hey, Sha, I'm so glad you could join me in my kitchen today. Of course, I just got back from a big fishing trip in Dulac, Louisiana, offshore with Mr. Andre Boudreaux. And all I caught was this wooden fish. No, seriously, this is a wonderful gift from a friend of mine, Stephanie Carodi. And we did catch some fish. I'll be using the platter with that wonderful catch. But first, let's look at the good times that we had and all the fish we caught in Dulac. Okay, Skipper, Andre, hello, Shaq. No, ma'am. Don't let me drive your boat? Yes, ma'am. I'd have to get away from the dock. Oh, you don't trust me? I don't trust the boat. Oh, you don't trust the boat? Or the dock. We're off. What a beautiful day. The new skipper at the wheel. Just a warning to other fishermen out there. Skipper Andre and my fishing buddies are enjoying the ride as much as I do. First, Andre gives me a hands-on lesson on baiting the hook. Ooh, God, that's cruel. Oh. Pull it through, isn't it? That way it'll stay on Oh, oh. poor darling. Okay. That'll, that'll work. That'll work. Mm -hmm. Oh, pretty yeah. good. Now, that's a real school of fish. I think Ben. Boy, I've got to do better than that. Now, that's better. Come on. Let's not talk about cooking them until he's in the mix. Uh, okay. There you go. Hey, now yeah. you can talk about cooking. Woo. Missy, where's the cookbook? You gotta know how to cook that. Hot dog. Look what I caught. What Speckle is it? Speckle trout. Speckle trout. Yes, Very good. Spotted good. wheak fish. See all the spots on him? Very good. Good eating. Very good. Not like a freshwater fish. You can't flip him. See all the teeth? Oh, okay. A juvenile red fish. My buddy isn't too happy about her catch yet. Must let the small ones go until next year. Time to go in and clean our catch of the day. Well, we caught many 
types of fishes, but I especially like this flounder. It's really unique in itself as it has just one flat side, you know, and it, it, they tell me they just have one eye, and uh, I think they, they may have two, but they're blind in one and can't see the other, and that's why this one caught my hook, <laughs> and that's why I caught it. So today I'll be showing you how to stuff flounder, and I'm going to make the stuffing first because while that sautés, I'll show you how to dress this for the stuffing. Okay, I'm going to melt some butter here. Of course, you can use margarine if you want to. And Okay, that's melted down. I'm going to add my onions to this. Okay. You add onions and celery. Of course, good old garlic. Ah, uh, don't want to all come out. Don't blame it either. Now, start that cooking down. Actually, you don't want to overdo your onions and celery and garlic. You just want to saute it to where they're kind of limp and their flavor's still there because you'll be baking this in the oven. So, and I'm going to add my onion tops. Mm -hmm that together a little bit. This is so easy and the way I learned how to do that is when I was invited to a camp supper. You know, Cajuns have camp suppers all the time. And uh, Mr. Uh, Duyon from Lake Arthur was there and he was stuffing flounders and he's the one showed me how to do this. So I'm going to share that with you. Now I'm using my old good old Louisiana shrimp, which by the way, out there in the Gulf, they were selling shrimp as bait. Of course, I wanted to buy them just to cook them. So you saute this real good all together. Crab meat, which we caught some crabs, and that's my favorite. Louisiana seafood's all my favorite anyway. And you can catch them all out there in offshore Louisiana, okay? Then next to that, I'm gonna use Mr. Egg again. He's getting to be my old buddy. Mm. Whip up some egg yolks. Okay, add them to the mixture. Then to this, you stir it up real good. Yeah, that looks good. To this, I'm gonna add some breadcrumbs, okay? Just, I gauge it according to my eye. What this does is that it holds the stuffing together. And so when you put it in your fish, it won't fall out. Now, let me add just a little bit more. Okay, very good. I'm gonna lower my fire. I'm gonna season this with salt and pepper. Mmm, boy, it smells so good already. A little bit. Black pepper. Mmm. Oh, I love to put a lot of seasoning in my stuffing because it makes it so much better. Okay, now we're gonna let this cook. Well, I'll show you how to stuff the flounder, and I'll show you how to dress it first, okay? Now, this, of course, like I showed you before, was the flounder. If you don't have access to flounder, you can always use catfish, because catfish is so accessible. It's easy to get. So first, you cut a little pocket right here, just on both sides. You run your knife right through the rib cage, because they just have a rib cage right here, okay? And of course, I have let this cool, and I had some stuffing already fixed. Now this will be kind of messy, but you know all good cooks are messy cooks. So you take your fingers and you stuff it real tight. I would do my crawfish bisque like this too. You put some on both sides because you have a cavity on both sides of the fish. You just stuff them like this. Mmm, this is, looks so good, smells so good already. Now what I'm going to do to this fish is that I'm going to bake it. But you can broil it too if you want to. You can add breadcrumbs on top if you want to, and I don't. I like to just leave it like this because my stuffing has breadcrumbs in it. Okay, now you see how pretty this is? This is gorgeous, yes. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in the platter. Okay, let me get my hands clean here. 
because we're going to bake this fish and we're going to go to the oven and bake it at 350 degrees and it depends about the size of the fish this is a pretty large one so I'll probably leave it in there for about an hour at 350 but if they're smaller you may want to lessen the time so I'm going to bake it now So while our fish is baking, we'll have time to fix some more dishes with Louisiana seafood. Mama cooked some maloutons often when I was growing up, and of course she passed that down to me. And what is a malouton? Well, it's a vegetable pear. Now, we had a problem with learning how to spell this because we had to do a lot of research. My director said it was spelled one way, the producer said it was another way, and I had no clue how to spell it. So we did some research, we got the correct spelling. But anyway, we're going to show you how to stuff the wonderful vegetable pear called the malouton. But first, I'm going to show you how I do the stuffing for this piece of vegetable, okay? Good. I'm going to start melting my butter here because you want to use butter or margarine. It doesn't matter. It'll be just as tasty one as the other. I like to use butter. It gives it that richer flavor. So you start melting this because you're going to saute your vegetables in here and cook your shrimp all together. Okay. To this, I'm going to add my onions. Of course, I'm going to gauge it. Hmm, pretty messy today. Still a good cook, I guess. Hmm, start that sauteing. Of course, to that, I'm going to add my onion tops. That's what she used in this. And onion tops and onions. Good old flavor, because it enhances that wonderful shrimp that we did get off of the boat in the Gulf. So, but you can catch gulf shrimp anytime when the season's open and they are wonderful they're great mm. now you don't want to saute your onions and uh you know too long because you don't want them too limp just when they get pretty and shiny like they're shiny right now so that's about sauteed enough you don't want to overcook them because see this will be baked also now to this i'm going to add some eggs. Oh, let me whip this up with my little fella. It's still helping me. Yeah, Mr. Egg. I'm gonna have to give him a name. Eggbird, I guess. <laughs> that sounds like a good name to me for an egg. Okay, mix all that together. And I'm gonna add my wonderful Louisiana shrimp. Okay, and actually we caught that day. Okay, now. Mmm, already the flavor is just blending in. Okay, I'm gonna add some garlic to this. Like I said, you can add it because you will be baking all this together. Now, to make the stuffing stick together, you add breadcrumbs. I use Italian breadcrumbs because it adds a, another little special flavor to it. Okay. And of course, your salt and pepper that Cajuns use every day. Yeah, according to your taste. Now, let me lower my fire a little bit. Okay, now, I'm gonna let this cook while I show you how I prepare the molotones. Okay, very good. So here we go now. Okay, now I have boiled these molotones for about like I said, about 45 minutes in some boiling water. So what you do after your molotons are tender, you want to make sure that they're, they're real tender. You take out the seed. This is the seed. That, oops, <laughs> those sucker wanted to run away. And then you go and you just go around with, I use a grapefruit knife. So we'll do it this way. This knife is pretty 
Yeah. I'm just going to add my pulp in here. Okay, and I'll put that there. Get the inside out. Okay. Very good. Like this. You take about, well, just the middle part, because that's where you're going to stuff it. Okay. Let's chuck it out. Alrighty. I'm going to cut this one up too, okay? Yes, I need two of them for my stuffing. Mmm, I hear my, mm, my stuffing's cooking away over there. Very good. Oops, I'm going through the skin. You don't want to do that. Now, okay. Use your grapefruit knife. Now, I use a grapefruit spoon too sometimes. Good. And I'll show you how to do that. See? Just take the inside out, go around, cut it, this, and you use your grapefruit spoon if that's what you want to use. Yeah, very good. Okay. Yeah. Whoops. Running away from me. Okay. And you put them in a baking dish because actually we will be baking these. And this is some cool stuffing that I have already cooked and cool because you don't want to burn yourself. Stuff them real good. This is so, so easy to do. Okay. Now, righty, good. See. Woo. Now, look how pretty that is already. And it's real tasty. Mmm. Oop, messy cook. Mm -mm -mm. Now, my hands, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these to the oven, and I'm going to bake them at 325 for about 25 minutes. Okay, so while these are baking, I'm going to start my wonderful quick and easy dessert. And now I'm going to fix a very special dessert. A friend of mine and viewer, Sybil Womack from New Orleans, Louisiana, sent me this wonderful recipe. Of course, it's so quick and easy, and it's delicious, and it's beautiful. First, I'm going to whip up some cream cheese. Okay, here. Okay, all righty. I guess I should have softened it before I started whipping it, huh? Oh well, now we have, we'll make it. Okay, then to this, I'm gonna add my sugar. Whip that up real well. Ooh, I'm a messy cook. But all good cooks are messy cooks, remember that. All right, but one bad thing about me, I have to clean up my own messes. See, chefs have someone to clean up after them, I don't. Okay, to this I added some lemon juice. Good, oh good, that's coming together. Now, all right, all right, that's good. Then I'm going to add some condensed milk. Mmm, this is going to really put the icing on the cake, or I guess the sweet in the cake. <laughs> all right, let's all whip this up all together. Mmm, boy, I love this condensed milk in here. Alrighty. Real good. Now, this is all whipped together real well. Lucy ought to be here. Okay. And now I'm going to add my whipped topping to this. I have to fold this in here. Okay. Well, easy. Of course, to this, I'm going to add some wonderful Louisiana strawberries. Mm. I've cut up my strawberries and put a little bit of sugar on them because sometimes you want to sweeten them up a little bit. Of course, with this condensed milk, I don't know if I'd have needed that. So I'm going to 
add this to it. Okay. Okay. Oh gosh, I could eat it just like this. <laughs> Top the cake. Mm hmm. Well, you can do that too. You just put it in a bowl and just serve it. It's gorgeous and it's very, very tasty. Now, I guess you could use a regular cake also with this. I just like the angel food cake. Gives it a special, I guess, a special name. Of course, with this cake, as you can tell, I have cheated again, like I like to do because I have, um, I've gotten lazy in my old age, so I'm going to cut up some pieces. You can put them in any size piece you want, and also, you could also break it with your hands if you want to. Just pieces like this, it adds to the presentation look, which I like to do it that way. But you layer it real like this. To that, I'm going to add this on top of it. Let me mix it up a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Hmm. Is that going to be good? Okay. You add some more. Just keep layering it as long as you have some cake or some filling or both. Of course, you can always dump the filling right on top of it. Okay. Yes. Mmm. Yes, I just really enjoy this, and this is so good. Now, you have to refrigerate this for about an hour because all the flavors of the, this layer, of course, you whip ingredients, will really soak into that cake, and mmm, you talk about good, chef. Mm-mm. Yes. Of course, this is not too good for diabetics or someone that's trying to lose weight, but you know, that's something Cajuns don't worry about, is losing weight. Mm. Okay. Add another layer. I think I'm just going to throw all I can in here, because the more, the better. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. My camera crew's going to enjoy this today. Of course, they enjoy all my cooking. Mm hmm very good. All right. Of course, I just have enough filling for one more layer of filling. So we're going to top this. Let me get my hands better here. Don't want to spill more than I, I have to. Okay, because remember, I have to clean up my messes. Gonna, one day I'm going to become a chef instead of a cook. Okay. Very good. This is wonderful. Then, of course, you want to top that with some beautiful Louisiana strawberries. You can do that. You can just add to it. And they'll, oops, it's a slip and slide. Okay. See how gorgeous this is? And, honey, you refrigerate that for about uh, an hour, and it's just delicious. Seems like all our meal has been prepared now, so let's see what it all looks like together. Kion, and this is a Kion meal because a Kion word means fantastic in French. I love these dishes. This is our gorgeous stuffed flounder, which I caught myself and I prepared myself. And then, of course, I have our wonderful stuffed malouton. Now, with this, I would serve a very special salad, the ambrosia salad. I learned how to make this salad in high school. It was my mom's favorite, so that's why I prepared it today for this special meal. And thanks to Civil Woman in New Orleans, Louisiana, for this wonderful dessert. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful, and it's also delicious. And so now we're going to enjoy all the wonderful products that I brought home from offshore Louisiana. Wow, 
What a great and wonderful time I shared with my fishing buddies and my new friend, Andre Boudreau, today in Dulac, Louisiana, off of the Louisiana coastline. And now I'm going to share a special fan mail with you. Dear Miss Lucy, just want to let you know that your show means so much to me. It reminds me of my mama's cooking and the great times she and I shared in her kitchen. Thank you for bringing back so many precious memories. All your stories and recipes reflect on the authentic Cajun lifestyle that I experienced growing up in Cottonport. Sincerely, Gail Gaspard from Pineville, Louisiana. Thank you, Gail, for sharing this, and thank you for joining me today. See you again soon, Jack. V, you didn't do that. <laughs> well, we're going look at Ron from outside Noah Lager. Look, 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 look. We got We got to do it again. I'm going to fall. The Louisiana Seafood Board is proud to sponsor Miss Lucy's Cooking Series. Louisiana cooking is known around the world, and Louisiana's main ingredient, seafood. We put the same thing into our music that we put into our gumbo. Everything. A Louisiana tour guide is available at www.louisianatravel.com. Louisiana crawfish, an appetizing natural resource.